screen and uh, and we'll get started here. Um, actually, let me let me grab let me just grab the uh, the, the actual equation. Uh, we don't need the answers at the moment to compare to. So the quadratic formula, it's it's very much a recipe. Uh, it's in this form: ax squared plus bx plus c. Problem is, is this isn't it, this isn't in that form. You got to first move stuff over. So it's four x squared. You subtract two x from both sides, and then you subtract one. And now you can do the quadratic formula: a equals four, b equals minus five, and c equals eight. Okay, so the quadratic formula is x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So for you, that's going to be minus a minus 5, so that'll be 5, plus or minus minus 5 squared minus 4 times 4 times 8 all over 2 times 4. So it's the part inside the root that we really got to be careful with. Uh, that's 25. Let me look at the answers just real quick. Again, okay. 25 minus, this is four times four is uh, 16 or four times eight is 32. And then four times 32 is uh, 128. So it ends up being inside the root there. Uh, 25 minus 132. Neither of those seem right. Why am I not doing this right? Oh, it's 128. Yes, 128, sorry about that. So this ends up being five plus or minus the square root of minus 103 over eight. And if you recall, whenever there's a negative inside the root, uh, that means there's gonna be an I. So you go five plus or minus I square root 103 over eight. And it looks like that corresponds to the, uh, the third answer there. I'll, I'll yeah. take, I'll take your silence as everything's okay. Yeah, we'll, sorry, we'll just, just, we'll just move. Writing, yeah, so. we'll just, we'll just do the next one here. There's, there's a, uh, you you know, the pure quadratic formula, just make sure you get everything on one side before you, you start doing it. Uh, okay, uh, so rewritten in vertex form. So there, there's actually a couple of ways to do this that like the way they want you to do is to complete the square, but um, the vertex in this form is minus b over 2a. And, and it's, it's kind of the same as before. The, a is nine, b is nine, and c is negative one. So in your problem, it's minus nine over two times nine, which is minus one half. Okay. okay. And then the y value, you get the y value by putting, uh, you're putting this negative one half back in to the uh, original equation. Now that's not great, but we do need it. Um, are you allowed to use a calculator on exams? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I know you can do this. I'm going to grab mine and uh, get the value here. So you do want a fraction. All right, so I get minus 13 over four. So why, why did I do all this? Well, I, I, I mentioned this before, and it, it, there's, a, there's a lot going on here, but when it's, when it's in standard form, and then on the right here is vertex form, okay? The only thing that's the same is the A's. Right. Okay, so for sure your A is nine because it's, it's nine here. Now you, the H, H is really the X. This is your H. So it's X minus minus one half. And your K, your K is the Y value. So it ends up being x plus one half squared minus 13 over four.
Any questions on that? No. Okay. All right, uh, number three. All right, if x squared plus mx plus m is a perfect square trinomial, which equation must be true? Okay, so we're gonna, we're actually just gonna, we're gonna foil each of these. There, there is another way to do it, but we, we might as well just do the foil. Um, and it's good practice for you also. Um, would you mind foiling this for me and telling me the result? How are you doing on that? So x squared plus one. So FOIL means first times first, right? And then it's the outer. So it's x times minus one. So that's minus x. And then the inner is minus one times x, which is also minus x. And then the last is minus one times minus one, which is plus one. So this is actually x squared minus two x plus one. Okay. Let me know if you see where uh, the diff discrepancy is between uh, my work and yours. Okay, so so to actually answer this question now, you have to look at the this number right here, the minus two and the plus one, and ask, are they the same? And you would say no. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to foil the next one here. X plus one squared um, times x plus one. So again, that's x squared, and then you do the the outer. That's one x. Then you do the inner, that's another one X plus one times one is one. So this one is X squared plus two X plus one. And again, you look, is the two the same as the one? The answer is no. So I want you to try the third one here. I want you to foil the third one, X plus two times X plus two. I got x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right. And is that what we wanted? That these two numbers the same? Yes. Yes. That's what we wanted there. OK, so let's look at the next question here. It says the sum of two complex numbers so a complex number means a plus b i. And an example would be like one plus three i. That's a complex number. Mm -hmm. where, the, where the real numbers do not equal zero. So they're saying like this first number can't be zero. Mm -hmm. OK, but there's two of them. So it's like two plus 31 i. OK, and, and when you add them, it says the result must be 34 i. Okay, so like like in this example here, do you see that three i plus thirty one i? When you add those together, you get thirty four i. Yes. What is one plus two? Three. It's not zero, is it? No. So how do we make it zero? 
Like, how do we, how, like, like we got what we wanted here. Like, what do we have to do with these numbers? Like, which one do we need to change or, or which or both do we need to change? You need to make one like a negative. Okay, so what should I make this one? Negative I agree. One. Negative what? Negative two. Negative two, yeah. Because negative two plus positive two is zero. And let's say I make this one um, 12. What should this one on the right be? Negative 12. Yes. So the answer is that the real part, the real part needs to be opposite in sign. Oh, um, okay. So which of those answers says that opposite in sign real parts or just opposite? The last one. Yeah. Okay. All right, it says, what is the value of the expression i to the zero times i to the one times i squared times i cubed times i to the fourth? Um, so one way to look at this problem is is to remember that when you when you multiply, like let's say off the side here is x squared times x cubed, when the bases are the same, do you remember what you do to the exponents? You minus them. You you add them you add oh, them when you're yeah. multiplying. If it's like x if it's like x to the fifth over x cubed, then you subtract them. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna add these zero plus one plus two, plus three, plus four, and i to the one, three, six. So we get i to the 10th power. Okay. Okay. And unfortunately, though, that answer is not there. Mm -mm. Okay. So we need to remember a few things. Remember that i is, is truly i. i squared is negative one. i cubed is negative i. And i to the fourth is one. So one way to deal with this problem is to break it up into like nice things, like i to the fourth, i to the fourth, and then what is the last i? What is the last power here? So that four plus four plus some number gets you to 10. Plus two. Two, that's right. And, and the reason I did it this way is i to the fourth is one, i to the fourth is one, and i squared is, negative one. So I break it up into into things that are nice to be able to answer this because I, I know I know you can do this uh, down here. Um, so let's say it was like I to the let's say it was like I to the 15th. You do the same thing. You get it's I to the fourth, I to the fourth, I to the fourth. That gets you to 12. Then you say, oh, it's I cubed. Okay. One times one times one times negative I. But in your problem, it becomes negative one. All right, I'll move on to question six. Yeah. All right, so it says it says which equation, but really you have to find the inverse. So to find the inverse, it's it's a set of steps. The first step that really matters is to switch x and y. So you end up getting x equals 9y squared minus 4. You just put x wherever you see a y and a y wherever you see an x. Okay. And then you, you, you solve. The second thing, this is the most important thing, is you solve for y. Right. OK. So for example, uh, we're going to add four to the other side. So you get x plus four equals nine y squared. Okay. Then you divide both sides by nine. So you get x plus four over nine equals y squared. And then you take the square root of both sides. So you take the square root plus or minus x plus four over nine equals square root of y squared. So it becomes y on the right. Okay. And you'll notice none of the answers match what is here on the left because you have to remember to take the square root of the top and then the square root of the bottom 
Oh, so it becomes three on the bottom? Yes. So the answer is the one that matches this, maybe. Yeah, that looks like it's there. Okay. You're probably good at pattern recognition, so you probably can like detect that, you know, some of your um, like, like, like if you get a problem like this in your exam, you should be like, try to remember like our conversation be like, oh yeah, like this might be that weird one. All right, yeah. <laughs> so. All right, number seven, number seven. So this is a pure quadratic formula problem. So, because like normally when you solve quadratics, like you might factor, you can graph completing the square, but like this one is quadratic formula. This is an A equals one, that's the number in front of X squared, B equals minus eight, and C equals 41. So X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C all over two A. And now to the to the matter of of substituting the numbers in. Um, do you get a reference sheet on your test, or can you do you have like your note spot with you? I have my notes. I don't get a reference sheet. Okay, so make sure you either memorize this or it's in your notes so that you've got it down. It will come up on the exam. It looks like so it's minus a minus eight. This so that's eight, and then it's minus eight squared minus four times one times forty one all over two times one. So that's eight plus or minus. So the side the inside the root here, it's 64 minus 164. Oh, that's nice. That worked out nicely. Um, so that's minus 100. Okay, now whenever there's a negative inside the root that means there's going to be an i it's so like square root of minus 100 is really the square root of negative one times 100 and it's really the square root of negative one times the square root of 100 it's really i times 10. so the the top right stuff like the square root of negative 100 becomes 10 i over 2. and from here you you have to divide both both of these eight over two plus or minus 10 i over two. So you get four plus or minus five i as your final answer. Okay, so let's move on to number eight. Uh, the wonderful which of the following. This is your your uh, you know your state test exam, standardized test exam stuff. Um, yeah. The the answers lead you to know what to do. So they all say the discriminant. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, the discriminant in the quadratic formula is the b squared minus four. AC, it's the part oh, under yeah. the root. Mm -hmm. So if we first need to just be able to calculate it. Um, so A is two, B is minus nine. Now, the problem here is this this one should have been added over. So C is actually three. Oh, okay. okay. Now, would you, would you mind calculating the value of the discriminant for me?
I got 81 minus 4. Well, oh, sorry. I don't know why I didn't catch it. I got 77. Uh, all right, let me check you here because I get I get minus nine squared minus four times two times three. Is that what you is that what you wrote down? Yeah. Wrote Eighty one minus this is twenty four though. Oh. And that's fifty seven. That actually doesn't change the answer, but it, it could in some. Yeah. Yeah, I did that wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now, so now, how do we how do we answer this? Well, there's actually it, it, it gets us down to these two. And it's like, well, that doesn't help because I just did the work. So complex roots, complex roots only occur when the part under the root, this this D, when this D is less than zero. That's the only time complex roots occur. Okay. So uh, that is not the case here. So it, the, your answer is this one. Um, the there, there's three there's three cases basically that that could happen um, if d is greater than zero it's two real roots i'll just summarize here if d equals zero it's one real root and if d is less than zero there are two complex roots Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's go to number nine. Um, nine is another inverse. Um, like if it were me as a student, I would probably try and do like all the inverse ones together, all the quadratic formula ones together on the exam just to kind of do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So for inverse, again, you have to switch. You have to switch X and Y. So it's y minus four squared minus two thirds equals six y, I'm sorry, six x, well, minus 12. So wherever you see an x, put a y, wherever you see a y, put an x. And then the second thing here is to solve for y. So we're gonna, we're gonna add this two thirds to both sides. Mm -hmm. So it's y minus four squared equals six x minus 12 plus two thirds. 12 is really 12 over one. Uh, so this becomes, when you make a common denominator here, it's minus 36 over three. Mm -hmm. And you get y minus four squared equals six x minus 34 over three. And, and this is where you might want to start looking at the answer space and being like, wow, like, I think it's either B or D. Right. Like, but it, they're, they're kind of, they're both in there. So that's not enough. You do have to undo the square root. I'm sorry, undo the square with the square root. So square root plus or minus square root 6x minus 34 over 3. Okay, so on the left, it becomes y minus four. And then you add four to both sides and that'll help you determine the final answer. All right, uh, number 10, number 10 here. All right, what is the absolute value of the complex number? That This is not the correct language. It should be asking for the magnitude of it. Okay. Um, this really means magnitude. So if you recall, a complex number is A plus BI. So its magnitude is A squared plus B squared square rooted. And notice the A is the number, B is the number in front of I. It does not include the I. Okay. So, so in your problem, A is minus four and your B is 
B is minus square root of two, but it does not include the I. And the sign goes with it. So, so you're, you're squaring four, you're squaring negative square root of two, and then you got to do a square root at the end. So it's 16 plus, when you square the negative, it becomes positive. When you square a square root, it goes away. So it is the square root of 18. Square root of 18 is a root that reduces nicely, uh, almost kind of nicely. The, the pair of threes come out. So it becomes three square root of two because two is what is left over when you're done. Right. Okay. And that is there. Thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So a lot of formulas here, like a lot of like when you go back and look at these notes or when you're preparing for this, you, you really want to like when you're on your exam, you're probably going to get a different number. But it's gonna be the same steps, you know. It's gonna right. be, it's gonna be do this and make sure you put the negatives in in parentheses and square it, and you know, make sure you can reduce your root. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so our next problem, and I remember us having a conversation last time. Where I was like, "Hey, none of these are the same." Um, did you ever get some feedback on that or figure yeah, out? Yeah, my teacher just said that she was just going to give me the points for it because it was wrong. That was pretty much it. So <laughs> that was kind of unhelpful. Like, yeah. I'm going to yeah. like, make sure that it doesn't happen again or anything like that. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and keep in mind, sometimes they don't have the ability to make the change, but, um, you know, it's frustrating for you because you're like, come on, like, I. Yeah, right. Oh, I'd like to get this right here. So, uh, um, I don't know if this one's better. I tried to, um, I did it on Decimos, trying to do it, and it didn't turn out well. I wasn't sure if I did it wrong or not. That's why it's still on. Right. Um, let me look here and try to tell you what is the correct one here. Um, All right, so it looks like the last one is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, but but I don't just want to feed you answers. I don't think you want that either. I'm sorry mm -hmm. for that. Maybe that language, but I, I, I think it would be good for maybe both of us simultaneously here to to try graphing this. Okay. Um, I'm going to do it and snip it in. And what we're looking for is overlap. We're looking for the exact same thing. So you're going to have to graph four lines in Desmos. And probably the hardest part is just getting it entered in correctly. But um, this is a good exercise. It's good practice to make sure that you're comfortable doing it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know while you're okay. doing this.
how are you doing with your graphing on this? The, the one that we're supposed to find the equivalent to in the last one. Okay. So this one, again, there's kind of an issue here. What you should see is that the first and the third are the same. Um, and, and what I wanted you to see is the first and the third, you just multiply everything by two to get them. Yeah. Now, two and four are actually identical, but they they actually have no solution, which is why there's no graph. Um, and you're like, well, what do you mean by that? Well, so let me try to show you this really quickly here. If you factor out a negative one on the left, you get six X squared plus two Y squared equals 11. And if you move that negative over here, here's what this says. It says, you take a number, square it, multiply by six, take a number, square it, multiply by two and add them together. These are always positive. So two positives can never equal a negative. Right. And that uh, reason I'm bringing that up is that this question has an error in it. Like, I think this is the right answer. If you're like, if this were for a grade, like this is what I would tell you to, to submit, but I would also tell you to like, let someone know like, Hey, this is wrong. Right. All right. So we may, we may be doing some more graphing. Um, but not with the next question. Next question, we'll just we'll just snip in and and, and look at. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the vertex of a parabola that opens downward is at zero, comma four. So, for example, here's zero four, and it opens down, goes down, goes down. I don't want to draw it yet. The vertex of a second parabola is at zero minus four. So it's here, okay? And if the parabolas intersect at two points, which, which statement must be true? Okay, I guess I need to graph this to show you what could happen. Um, boy, I don't, I guess I get frustrated because I, 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 I love graphing. Like, I think there's a, there's a place to like, just graph everything and um, you know, I don't know if you're going to be able to do that on the exam, but let me, let me try to try to show you here what's going on. So CX squared, uh, I'm sorry, minus CX squared plus four, add a slider right there. Okay. So do you see how that, you're seeing my screen, hopefully? Yes, I am. So that has a, that has a, um, it, that's the first one. Okay. The yeah. next one is. It's a little tougher to see. Uh, I'm gonna go a different one here. Let's go dx squared minus four. Okay. And do you see how the, the green one opens up? So these hit in, these mm -hmm. hit in two spots. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. And and if I play them, I think we'll get the right behavior, but but basically you're gonna see um, Actually, let me tighten this one up here. Let's go. Uh... All right. So if I just change the other one, you can see that it it uh, it still just gets two it's, st it's still two. I I should make it go less than I should make it go to zero also because that will that will change it. But let me play this. You can see it gets really wide. And so on, right? Now the yeah. other one, the other one though, I don't think it said whether it opened up or down. No, that's okay. So watch this. If it opens down, you might think, well, I don't know. Do they intersect? Well, yeah, they actually, they actually can. So let me, okay. let me change this and play it now. So there, they actually never intersect. But, oh. but now that it's coming back, they intersect twice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once, once it gets inside there, it never intersects. And then it, you can get that. So there, there's like a few possibilities here is I guess what I'm trying to, to show yeah. you. And so what is the correct answer? Um, if the parabola's intersect at two points, it, it wasn't necessarily true that the parabola, um, well, must be true. 
Well, <sighs> points on the section X axis. No, no, I guess I would go with B on that, but they, they, I don't feel real strongly about that. Yeah, that's how I felt like, because I, I did something similar. I didn't do it so it had the things, but I put dots and I kind of envisioned it in my mind how Great. it looked. And I, the upward was the way I got to, I didn't even try it downward to like think about that, but it, it doesn't work as true as it going upward. Yes. So. Fantastic. All right, so we're at the we're at the point where you maybe want to say, "Hey, Matthew, I want to do these questions for sure." Um, I don't know if you want to take a minute or two to do that, or if, if you. Uh, but we would doubt we do not have time to go through all of them. So yes. do, I, I can pick the easier ones to get through more of them, or you can tell me what you want to work on. But I, I think you're going to have to give me some direction here. Okay. Um, so. So twenty one, now twenty two is like twenty two, twenty four, let's see, and like. Uh, are, you, are you telling me which ones you want to do? Yes, yeah, sorry. Could you, could you send them into the chat, please? That, that way yeah. I don't miss any. All right, so I'll do them in that order. Yeah. Okay, so 13. Um, boy, oh, this is one of those intermediate answers. Okay. So what I would recommend when you get a problem like this, um, are you seeing are you seeing my screen, the, the uh, question yeah. 13? Okay. What I would recommend when you're doing a problem like this is uh, working it out without looking at the answers and then, okay. and then okay, figuring, like trying to match it up. So, um, the commutative property, what that means is like, it's like three plus four equals four plus three. Okay. okay. So why does that matter? So it's like, if you rewrite this without the parentheses, cause you don't need them anymore. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can switch the order. Like you can do minus one plus 21 plus I. Do you see how I switched I and 21? Yeah. Okay, that is the commutative property. Now, is that one there? Um, Yes, it is. Okay. There it is. It just doesn't look like it because you got you got to balance. You got to throw in parentheses, and they have a capital. It's, a, it's but yeah. It See, that's there. what I thought you did first, but then there were so many other options, and then I saw new property addition, and I was worried I was supposed to add something, and then I got confused. Yes. <laughs> I guess I overthought it. <laughs> or yes. Okay, so so there's there's a couple ways to do 18. One is to graph it. Um, the other is to use a quadratic formula. Which would you like us to do? I would rather graph it, but probably do the quadratic formula. Well, it's it's not that it's wrong. It's it's I mean you're not okay, just like if you go to a state testing thing, they're not gonna give you questions like this. This is not this is way extreme algebra two but you also wouldn't have the graphing tool either so but you wouldn't get it you wouldn't get a problem this difficult either so it's like what well, let, me, let, let me grab it because it, it really will open up like oh really that's it that's it yeah it really is so let me share um what i'm going to do is graph it exactly as it's written y equals 3x squared plus 7x plus m and this and you do add this slider okay, okay. Now, 
and if again, if you hit the home button, get home. So the question, the way the question is written is it says, um, for what values of M does the graph have two intercepts? So you can see that they give you kind of these breakpoints. So let's do 25 over three like that. Is, isn't that one of them? Yes. So 25 over three, just looking at this, does it have two, does it cross here twice? No. Okay, so let's go, let's, let's make it, uh, oops. So like, one of the things we can do is make it bigger. And let's see if like, if that helps. So actually let's, let's do the other point. Let's go 49 yeah. over 12. Do you see how it's touching there? Yes, I do. So if we, if we just increase it slightly, so I made it went 50 instead of 49. Yeah. Now it doesn't have any, but if I go the other way, now it has two. Oh, okay. And you can kind of even zoom in and see that there. Yeah. So it's a little bit of like using the answers to your benefit by like seeing, oh, there's there's a break point. One's at 25 over three and one's at 49 over 12. And you just try each one until you get what you're right. looking for. So that would be the M is less than 49 over 12? Yes, 12? yes, yes. Yes. All right, so 21 can be done using decimals. For this one, I will show you how to do it by hand as a reminder. This, this is a fairly good um, a question to ask on a standardized test. So okay. um, the approach I would use here is substitution. I would actually solve the first one. I would solve for y. And, and plop that in here. So y equals x plus three. You're gonna you just move that three over to the other side. So this x plus three it is what goes in here. So that gives you x squared minus six x plus thirteen equals x plus three. And then as you know, you want to move everything to one side. So you see so minus x minus x minus three minus three x squared minus seven x plus ten equals zero. Sometimes you get into this mode of like, I'm going to use quadratic formula. It works for everything and it does, but it's the wrong tool here. You actually just want to factor. Okay. You want to find two numbers that multiply to 10, but add up to negative seven. Mm -hmm. So do either of these add up to negative seven? Yeah, negative five and two. Yes, so we would write x minus two, x minus five, and then you set each of these equal to zero. Okay, and then uh, we know that x could be two, x could be five. And mm -hmm. so um, that that is enough there to answer the question because if you look at the ordered pairs, um, the, let me grab them here. Only one of them has uh, x equals two in it. Yeah. So you could immediately be like, oh yeah, it's it's this third one. But to find the y value, you have to take this two and you have to put it back into the original equation up here, x plus three. Mm -hmm. So it does it does still work because two plus three is five. That gives you that third answer there. Right. Okay. All right, 22. This one, I'm just kind of confused how I'm supposed to know what quadrant to use. Yeah. So, so remember, it's it's A, oops, sorry. It's A plus BI, okay? What is the value of A and what is the value of B? A is six and B is eight. B is actually negative eight. Eight. It takes on that sign. Okay, so here, here's the answer to all the possibilities. A and B are greater than zero. A and B are less than zero. Okay, now this is the one that's a little bit tougher to do. Um, a is less than zero, but B is greater than zero. Mm -hmm. A greater than zero, B less than zero. And this is quadrant one, two, three, and four. 
So you and this problem are in quadrant four. Okay, so I just looked up from, I was writing it all down. And you're still on decimals. So sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's, I did chemistry all day, so I'm not really with it completely. It's either. okay. This is what you, this is what you need to get down. This is what you want to take from the notes that I send you. Like, this is the summary stuff. Okay. But, all right. Yeah. Um, all right. So now let's do the last one. Mm -hmm. Might have time for another, we'll see. Uh, so I used to I used to have a second computer that I would always join with to make sure that I knew what you were seeing as a student. And I, I stopped doing that years ago because I, I was like, oh, I've got it, but I still mess up every once in a while um, and do this. Cool. Fine. So the domain here, the domain of all square roots, you take this inside part, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and you set this inside greater than or equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So okay. the, the this is the correct answer, but I'll show you why. You set x plus 11 greater than or equal to zero, and you solve for x. Okay. So you end up getting this right there. But why would we add five? That's what I don't. That doesn't. Say. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. Okay. Yeah, you don't. That, it's not important. It's it's a, it's, a, it's, a it's a distraction. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry we didn't get through everything today. Um, you know, if you need some help tomorrow early afternoon, I might be able to accommodate a lesson. But um, you know, you may be okay. Take a look at our notes. Take a look at the screen recordings if you've got time, and you know, I think you'll do great. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. I knew we wouldn't get through all of them. There was a lot of problems. Yes. Thank you for doing your best. Of course. Have a great have a great night. Bye now. You too. Bye.